The Sandman's Hour, Stories for Bedtime, by Abby Phillips Walker The Good Sea Monster On an island of rocks, out in the ocean, lived a sea monster. His head was large, and when he opened his mouth, it looked like a cave. It had been said that he was so huge that he could swallow a ship, and that, on stormy nights, he sat on the rocks, and the flashing of his eyes could be seen for miles around. The sailors spoke of him with fear and trembling, but as you can see, the sea monster had really been a friend to them, showing them the rock in the storm by flashing his eyes. But because he looked so hideous, all who beheld him thought he must be a cruel monster. One night there was a terrible storm, and the monster went out into the ocean to see if any ship was wrecked in the night, and if possible, help any one that was floating about. He found one little boy floating about on a plank. His name was Coco, and when he saw the monster, he was afraid. But when Coco saw that the monster did not attempt to harm him, he climbed on the monster's back, and he took him to the rocky island. Then the monster went back into the sea, and Coco wondered if he were to be left alone. But after a while, the monster returned and opened his mouth very wide. Coco ran when he saw the huge mouth, for he thought the monster intended to swallow him. But as he did not follow him, Coco went back. The monster opened his mouth again, and Coco asked, Do you want me to go inside? and the monster nodded his head. It must be for my own good, said Coco, for he could easily swallow me, if he wished, without waiting for me to walk in. So Coco walked into the big mouth and down a dark passage, but what the monster wanted him to do he could not think. He could see very faintly now and after a while he saw a stove, a chair, and a table. I will take these out, said Coco, for I am sure I can use them. He took them to a cave on the island, and when he returned the monster was gone. But he soon returned, and again he opened his mouth. Coco walked in this time without waiting, and he found boxes and barrels of food, which he stored away in the cave. When Coco had removed everything, the monster lay down and went to sleep. Coco cooked his dinner, and then he awoke the monster and said, Dinner is ready. But the monster shook his head, and plunged into the ocean. He soon returned with his mouth full of fish. Then Coco knew that the monster had brought all the things from the sunken ship for him, and he began to wish that the monster could talk, for he no longer feared him. I wish you could talk, he said. I can, the monster replied. No one ever wished it before. An old witch changed me into a monster and put me on this island where no one could reach me, and the only way I can be restored to my original form is for someone to wish it. I wish it, said Coco. You have had your wish, said the monster, and I can talk, but for me to become a man, 
someone else must wish it. The monster and Coco lived for a long time on the island. He took Coco for long rides on his back, and when the waves were too high, and Coco was afraid the monster would open his mouth, and Coco would crawl inside and be brought back safe to the island. One night, after a storm, Coco saw something floating on the water. He then jumped on the monster's back, and they swam out to it. It proved to be a little girl, about Coco's age, who had been on one of the wrecked vessels, and they brought her to the island. At first she was afraid of the monster, but when she learned that he had saved Coco as well as her, and brought them all their food, she became as fond of him as Coco was. I wish he were a man, she said one day, as she sat on his back with Coco. Ready for a sail, splash went both children into the water, and there in place of the monster was an old man. He caught the children in his arms and brought them to the shore. But what will we do for food? Now that you are a man, asked Coco. We shall want for nothing now, replied the old man. I am a sea god and can do many things, now that I have my own form again. We will change this island into a beautiful garden, and when the little girl and you are grown up and married, you shall have a castle and all the sea gods and nymphs will care for you. You will never want for anything again. I will take you out on the ocean on the backs of my dolphins. Coco and the little girl lived on the enchanted island, and all the things that the old sea god promised came true. <laughs>